जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जय जाय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिप्राज कचार्य 
Ashto to the Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadi Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada ki jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda ki jai. Nama Charja Sri Dharidas Thakur ki jai. Prem Sakaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar. Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda ki jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gokopinath Sham Kuna Radha Kunigidi Govardhan ki jai. Vrindavan Tham ki jai, Navadip Tham ki jai, Jagannath Puri ki jai, Ganga Mai ki jai, Jamana Mai ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, All glories to the assembled devotees, Gaur Premanande, Krishna, Krishna. And now is the auspicious time to check your cell phone. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita as it is, ninth chapter, text 22. Ananyas chintayanto mam ye jana paryupasate te sham nitya piyuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham Ananyaha, having no other object. Chintayantaha, concentrating. Mam, on me. Ye, those who. Chanaha, persons. Paryupasate, properly worship. Properly worship. Tesham, Tesham of them. Of them. Nitya, Nitya always. Always. Abhiyuktanam. <coughs> fixed in devotion. Fixed in devotion. Yoga. Yoga. Requirements. Requirements. Shemam. Shemam. Protection. Protection. Bahami. Bahami. Carry. Carry. Aham. Aham. I. I. Those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Purport. One who is unable to live for a moment without Krishna consciousness cannot but think of Krishna 24 hours a day, being engaged in devotional service by hearing, chanting, remembering, offering prayers, worshiping, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, rendering other services, cultivating friendship, and surrendering fully to the Lord. Such activities are all auspicious and full of spiritual potencies, which makes the devotee perfect in self-realization, so that his only desire is to achieve the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee undoubtedly approaches the Lord without difficulty. This is called yoga. By the mercy of the Lord, such a devotee never comes back to this material condition of life. Kshema refers to the merciful protection from the Lord. The Lord helps the devotee to achieve Krishna consciousness by yoga. And when he becomes fully Krishna conscious, the Lord protects him from falling down to 
to a miserable conditioned life. Omagana timidantasya kenanjana shalakaya Shakshur militam jena tasmai shri gudave namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Shwayam Rupa Kada Maiham Tadhati Shapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Jutta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Shagrashatam Shahagana Raganathan Vitam stam sajivam, Shadvetam shavathutam, Parishana sahitam, Krishna chaitanya devam, Sri Radha Krishna padan, Shahagana lodita, Sri Vishakhan vitamscha, He Krishna karuna sindho, Dina bandho jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kam Shanagaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshari Prashabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hodi Priye Vansha Kopatadu Vyascha Kripa Sindho Vyayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare The baby is completely dependent on the mother. And therefore the mother is always looking after the child. There's no legislation needed or anything else. Uh, the child is completely dependent. And therefore the mother is completely attentive to the uh, baby's welfare. That's natural. So the living beings are dependent by nature. It's our nature to be dependent on Krishna. Uh, Srila Prabhupada sometimes said, the living entity is dependent and Krishna is dependable. Hmm? So, when the living being is dependent on Krishna, Krishna takes full care. Uh, yoga kshema. Uh, he gives, uh, he brings the devotee to him. Tadami buddhi yogam tam yena maam From within, he gives intelligence by which the devotee can come to him, can make progress on the path back to God. And Shema, he protects the devotee. Ananya is chintayantoma. Ananya means nothing else. Chintayanta means thinking, contemplating. The business of the pure devotee is to always think of Krishna. Smartavyam satatam vishnu vi smartavyam najatutha chit. Always to remember Krishna and never to forget Krishna. That's the natural position. When there's some fire in Vrindavan, some forest fire, at once, Krishna, Krishna, the Rajbhasis are immediately calling for Krishna. They're not, they don't have to think about it, they don't have to say, well, should we go to Krishna? Should we? Uh, maybe Durga could help us more, or maybe Lord Shiva. Automatically, they're thinking of Krishna. Automatically, spontaneously. Because they're in 
pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness. And therefore Krishna is always thinking about their welfare. Krishna is always thinking about the welfare in the, in the elsewhere in the Bhagavatam. Sadhava hridiyam mayam sadhunam hridiyam tvam. Krishna says the devotees are in my heart and I'm in the heart of the devotees. They don't know anyone but me, so I don't know anyone but them. That's ananya bhakti. Not looking elsewhere. Not looking elsewhere. Rakshasya titi vishvasho kokrutve varanam tata. This is surrender. The, to think that Krishna will protect me under all circumstances. I simply have to be dependent on Krishna, surrendered to Krishna, and Krishna will take care of me. And if he doesn't, I'll die. Hmm? He may take care or not take care. Anyway, it's up to him. But I have no other shelter. I won't go someplace else. Uh, this is the understanding of the pure devotee. The, he doesn't hedge his bets. He doesn't think, well, I'll worship Krishna, and I'll worship, then I'll worship, and I'll worship this one, this one, this one, this one. Now, just in case, like diversified investments. <laughs> Fully dependent on Krishna. Krishna will protect me. Yes. Therefore, Prabhupada could come to America with nothing. Krishna will protect me. And Prabhupada saw practically, he gave the example, that every living entity is getting its food. Krishna is providing for everyone, even the demons Krishna is providing. Why will he not provide for the devotees, for the animals he's providing? By nature's arrangement, there's something for every living being. We're struggling. How will I live? How will I live? But we'll live one way or another. Everyone is. Our main business is, how will I become Krishna conscious? How can I serve Krishna? And Krishna will take care of the rest. That's a fact. Ananyas chintiyanto ma. Yejana Paryupasate, those who are properly engaged in Krishna's service, not by some whimsical method, some mental concoction, but those who are following the bhakti yoga process under proper direction. For them, Tesham Nitya Biyotana, because they're always serving him, their position is secure. Not that uh, the Life Insurance Corporation of India will protect me. Uh, Krishna will protect me. Yoga Kshema Maham Yaha. Mm -hmm. Krishna says, as one surrenders to me, I reciprocate. This is the, his invitation, in one sense, that we should, uh, come on, reciprocate with me, I'll reciprocate. Love me, I'll love you. As you love me, I'll also love you. That's Krishna's. Invitation, patram pushpam palam toyam. You can offer me 
even a leaf, a flower, fruit or some water, and because it's offered with love, I'll, I'll take that, I'll accept that, I'll eat that. Bhaktya, because love is there, because devotion is there. So, hearing about Krishna, chanting, remembering Krishna, offering prayers to Krishna. In this way, there are nine different ways to be engaged in devotional service. And the main thing is to be always engaged. Ananyas chintayanto to Ekeha Guru Nandana, to have one objective. And everything else is serving that objective. Bahu Shaka Yanantascha Buddha Yavyavasayana. If we uh, have so many different objectives, then our energy is splayed and we won't make that strong progress. But when we have one pointed determination, I must serve Krishna, I must become Krishna conscious. I must go back to God. When that, and then everything else has to serve that purpose. Then, very quickly, very quickly, we can make progress by that spiritual determination. I'm going to stop and see what kind of questions there are, if any. Mm -hmm. You say Krishna provides, but I think there are places in the world where people die of starvation, so how is that, you know, Krishna doesn't provide them, you say they provide even animals. Yes. Of course, generally, no one starves. You know, we always look for the case, well, here's someone who's starving, but generally speaking, he's providing. And sometimes if there's starvation, that's also meant. That's also meant to happen. We'd complain if it didn't, you know, war criminals and terrible uh, villains get off and nothing happens to them and we say, where is justice? How could there be God? And then if God punishes with them, we say, oh, how can there be God? People are dying. On account of previous karma, someone is sometimes starves also. <laughs> paying off that karmic debt. That's also Krishna's mercy. No one dies, actually. Even if someone starves to death, he doesn't die. That doesn't mean we're so cold-hearted. We say, ah, let everybody die. But everyone will die. That's a fact. He'll starve to death. He'll work to death. He'll eat to death. One way or another, everyone's going to die. Live to death. Everyone will die. So what is there to lament? What's lamentable is if he dies without Krishna consciousness. He lives to a ripe old age and never asks about spiritual realization. That's lamentable. If he lives for a moment in Krishna consciousness, that's glorious. There's one king, Katranga Maharaj. He was serving the demigods in their wars with the demons. And the demigods, he served for many, many years, so the demigods became very pleased. They offered a benediction. What can we do for you? And I'd like to know how much longer I'll live. How much longer will I live? They said, not long, a few moments. He surrendered to Krishna and made his life successful. Hmm? In a moment. So Bhagavatam says, better one moment of spiritual realization than a long life wasted without any Krishna consciousness, without inquiring about the purpose of life. Is that okay? Maharaj, mm -hmm. you said uh, in the verse, you said, if we are Tama, I forgot you, Tama, I forgot the journey. So, in that, you said that uh, so the way you would uh, love Krishna 
and love, uh, Krishna is going to love back in yeah. the same way. So, so does it, this doesn't sound, uh, this sounds more like a very, okay, I love you the, the way you love me, I'm going to love you back the same way. So if you're going to give me this, I'm going to give you this much money. Sounds and like you, business. Yeah, 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 yeah Tom, Mom, and tell you love me yeah. this much, I'll love you that much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so therefore, Prabhupada sometimes said, if you take one step toward Krishna, Krishna takes five steps toward you. As you approach Krishna, he reciprocates, but he reciprocates more. You know, the child is mm, asking something for the mother, approaching... And because the child's approaching, the mother's giving like anything. Yes, take, take. It's not, you didn't scream loud enough. The child is approaching. But if the child is not looking toward the mother or the child is off, runs away from home, what can the mother do? So as one approaches Krishna, just like the sun, the sun will... If you go out into the, you know, on the, on the beach on a warm, sunny day, the sun will shine on you like anything. More than you can expect. Or, what can we say? The sun will just generously, won't hold back. Okay, that's enough. No. Take more, take more, take more. Like a guest at an Indian home, you know, the, guest, the, the, uh, the host doesn't say, okay, you got your quota. Take more, take more, take more. Because you came to my house, take more. If you don't come, then, you know, you don't get. But if you come, take more, take more, take more. So Krishna is not stingy. He's got a measuring, you surrendered this much. Sorry, that's all you surrendered. He'll give generously. But it's in proportion to our approach. If the sun is out, shining gloriously, and you barricade yourself inside and block the windows, you're not going to get the sunshine. Why? Is the, the sun holding back? Is the sun saying, well, no, I'm sorry, I don't like her? No. You turned away from the sun. My hand, if it turns toward the light, the palm gets the light. If it turns away, it gets the darkness. It's up to the palm. But if it turns this way, it'll get so much light. The light is generous. But Krishna is generous. You take one step toward Krishna, he'll take five steps toward you. Uh, yes, is that all right? Hmm. Something else? I wonder who else has a question. Yes. What are the qualifications for? The main qualification is you have to speak up, or I can't hear you. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. uh, actually, to make uh, what, to what extent we have to make progress in our spiritual life to go to go back to God. To what extent do you have to make progress in your spiritual life to go back to Godhead? 100% you have to make progress. It's like, to what extent do you have to um, be successful in the race in order to reach the goal? It, the question answers itself. You have to be 100% successful to reach the goal. That's success. What is the? What is the? 100% means ananyas chintayanto mam, always thinking of Krishna, not thinking of something else. Jnana karma adyanavata. When we say pure devotee, what is the difference between pure devotee and general devotee and a pure devotee? What's the difference between a general devotee and a pure devotee? That's a very interesting question because that word pure devotee is termed pure devotee is used in all sorts of ways. Sometimes Prabhupada said that all the general devotees are pure devotees. But pure means there are different stages of advancement. There are pure beginners and there are pure advanced devotees also. The person who just walks in, he's interested in Krishna consciousness, he wants to chant and join with the devotees, he's also a pure devotee. And the person who's 
very experienced and learned in Shastra and always engaged. He's also a pure devotee. Just like the mango, the kacha mango, unripe mango is also mango. And the ripe mango is also mango. But one has reached the mature stage. So one can be pure from the very beginning. Simply be engaged in Krishna's service, sincerely chant Hare Krishna, and serve Krishna with enthusiasm. That's also pure devotee. And then as you serve, you become advanced, more advanced, more advanced. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Something else? You do. So, uh, uh, like Krishna revealed to people in different ways, depending on different level of their, uh, the way they would take it or the way they are advanced. So, the way Krishna has revealed himself throughout this world is so different. So, because of which there are different religions and, you know, so many different kinds of beliefs and faiths and uh, uh, variations. So why didn't Krishna, I mean, and, and it is actually very confusing. So why didn't actually Krishna reveal that he was Krishna to everybody and that he's only the Lord Krishna and then actually... Because yeah, yet, why doesn't Krishna, Krishna reveal the same way to everyone? Because yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, prapajante. people have different, just like someone, just like Hanuman. Why doesn't Krishna reveal himself to Hanuman, that I'm the person that you should serve. It's because Hanuman has love for the Lord as Ramchandra. So the Lord appears before him as Ramchandra to reciprocate. You want to serve me this way as a great king? Hanuman doesn't want to serve a coward boy. He wants to serve Krishna in the form of king. So Krishna has taken that form and, he, and Hanuman is serving to his heart's content. So he's serving that way. Someone else, even gopis are serving Krishna one way, coward boys are serving another way, Yashoda Mai, Nanda Maharaj are serving another way. All according to, and they're seeing Krishna differently also. Yashoda and Nanda, our child, and gopis, our beloved, coward boys, friend, so Krishna is reciprocating with everyone according to their desire. Even in different religions, Krishna is there. He's reciprocating one way or another, according to, sometimes according to the modes of material nature one is picked up. Some people are worshiping Krishna, but their worship is qualified by the mode of passion. They're worshiping Krishna, but you see that passion is mixed with their devotion. Some ignorance is mixed. Some goodness is mixed. Some mental speculation is mixed. That's called karma mishra bhakti. They're worshipping Krishna, but with some speculative tendency. Some karma mishra bhakti. They're worshipping Krishna, but they're still stuck up on the idea of making advancement by pious Punya karma, good deeds. They're worshipping Krishna, but this other thing is mixed in. So, uh, still Krishna is reciprocating. Even one was worshipping the demigods, Krishna is reciprocating through the demigods. Mayaiva vihita anita. Uh, Krishna says he's worshipping me, but um, avidhi purvaka, indirectly. So I reciprocate through to him indirectly. Even the materialists, they're trying to get something material by hard work or by uh, brain power. And Krishna is reciprocating through the material energy, through Maya. So therefore, Krishna, everyone's after me, but in different ways. Someone through the material energy, someone through the spiritual, some impersonally, they want to see God as an all-pervading oneness. Krishna's, all right, here I am, all-pervading oneness. 
as one approaches Krishna, Krishna, because everyone has a different desire, everyone has some different idea. Krishna is reciprocated. But Bahunam Janmanamante, after many, many births of advancement, one can come to the point, Vasudeva Sarvamitu, Krishna is everything, let me surrender here. It's not a one life project. Although it can be, we can finish however many life projects, how many lifetimes the project has taken up to this point. Now is a good time to finish it. In this lifetime, finish the project. Go back to that. In the spiritual world, it's not confusing. It's only confusing here. Is that OK? How can we understand that when we chant Hare Krishna or we're compassionate to others, we're... We are in the right direction of the spiritual path. Right, rightly situated in, right. in the spiritual path. Whether we can get any kind of indication from Krishna or from spiritual that, you, yes, you, you were in the right direction, so some changes happen in our life. How do we get confirmation that we're on the right path? Yes. We, especially, of course, we may feel something, but our feelings are, may not always be reliable. You know, I'm doing something stupid and I feel like I'm on the right path. That also happens. Therefore, we look more to the guidance of the advanced devotee or spiritual master. The spiritual master says, yes, you're making progress. Then we know, yes, I'm making, it's certified, I'm making progress. Yes. Tad vigyanartam sagurum eva. Just in the school, the, the, the student thinks he's doing good, the teacher says, comes and looks and says, what are you doing? This is all backwards. But then the student, no, yes, I'm doing it backwards. Or the teacher comes and says, oh, very nice, you're doing that perfectly. Then the student knows, yes, now I'm doing it right. Therefore, the spiritual master is required. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to this Krishna provides, I was thinking like how to understand it in a more practical way because if you uh, think too literally then it sounds like okay I don't have to do anything just pray, chant or read and Krishna provides me, it's like he's serving me. Yes, how do we not take it so literally I don't have to do anything, I kick back and Krishna provides. Actually sometimes there are such advanced souls, that's what they do. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj met one man, he was just lying like a python on the ground, you know, he wasn't doing anything. And he was fat. Prahlad said, how is this? You're not doing anything, and you're, I, I see that you're fat also. So that man said that, yes, you know, by nature's arrangement, sometimes this, sometimes that. But that's a very advanced position. If we all, generally Krishna says, sharira yatra pitachate na akarmana. You can't even maintain your own body without working. And Krishna never tells Arjun that you take a break and I'll, I'll fight the battle of Kurukshetra for you. So we have to do our prescribed duty, that's also part of devotional service. Uh, but not exactly so that Krishna will maintain me. As a matter of duty, I have to do it. And Krishna will maintain me. Krishna will maintain me. I have to do something, that's all right. But I should know that under any circumstances, Krishna is my maintainer. I have to do the work. Sometimes the result may not come. I work and I don't get anything. But the devotee always depends on Krishna. And Krishna will somehow see to my welfare. <laughs> that hunter was there. Narad Muni made one hunter a devotee. This hunter was accustomed to 
half-killing animals he would enjoy by watching the animal squirm in pain. So Narad Muni came, he saw that this hunter is acting so sinfully. Anyway, he persuaded the hunter that this is very sinful business, you're going to suffer. So the, uh, yeah, I think we have to move up again because space has become less. We knew it would happen. Okay. So the hunter surrendered to Nard Muni, tell me what to do. Nard Muni said, you throw away your bow and arrow. Here's the, here's the lake, you throw it in the lake or wherever. Get, get rid of this bow and arrow by which you're torturing these animals. Then the hunter said, if I do that, this is my, my source of livelihood. How will I eat? Nard said, I'll send you food, don't worry. So the hunter gave up his bow and arrow. Nard said, you just live on the side of the Ganga and you make a little hut and you and your wife, you worship Tulsi and, don't, and chant Hare Krishna. And don't worry about your food. I'll send. So the hunter accepted. He did that. He's living on the side of the river and worshiping Tulsi, chanting Hare Nam. And the word got around that the hunter has become a devotee. So people came to see how is this hunter became, how has he become a devotee? And the custom is that when you go visit a saintly person and you bring something, a little rice, a little dal, a little something. So people were coming and they were bringing and he had so much that practically he had, uh, was giving it away. Then Nard came later Again, he said, so how are things going? Yes, everything's all right, but you're sending so much food, I don't know what to do with it all. <laughs> so sometimes we think that our, you know, this arrangement that I have is what's keeping me alive. No, it's Krishna that's keeping me alive. If it weren't this way, it would be some other way. And we should stop here. I can take one more question. Yes. Maharaj, I want to thank you for your encouragement yesterday regarding the upcoming Prabhupada Kondali Festival. Um, you made a comment regarding how we need to prevent this event from becoming a temple picnic. Mm. We need to extend ourselves to the general mm. public. So you have seen many festivals in your time. Do you have any specific suggestions about how you can be inclusive? Do I have any specific suggestions about how you can be inclusive in festivals? Go to the places you're not going. Go to the people that you're not reaching. Don't do the easy thing. We know what the easy thing is. It's to, to go to our, our friends and the usual people and say, you know, we're having a birthday party, come on. But uh, just like in exercise, the progress comes by stretching. Right? If you just do the same thing, then you don't make, after a while, you're not going anywhere. You have to, okay, I'm doing 10, now I have to do 12. I'm doing 12, I have to do 14. I've done this one, now I have to master that one. I don't... I don't think this is the time and place to start thinking up particular strategies, but there's lots. Of, I mean, look at it this way. There are all sorts of people looking for spiritual life, and they're going elsewhere. There's lots of people. You know, there's, it's a big marketplace. We only own a small... If you were in business, you'd look at it and say, we're only getting this, this little segment of the potential customers. Where are the other customers? Why aren't they coming? What is it that we have to um, think about to address their needs, their interests, so that they'll also want to come? Why are we missing these potential customers? 
So you think about it. And by your thinking about it, and by then, all right, let me try. I'll give you an example. I was in Botswana, north of South Africa. We have a temple there which is, they're mostly Punjabis and a couple of South Indians and anyway, well, practically all Indian devotees. And, but the country is massively African. S small number of Indians. And they live also in an African neighborhood, kind of an affluent, upscale African neighborhood. So they're going on with their business. They built a beautiful temple, and, but the people who come are all Indians. So then when I was last there, we went door to door to the neighbors' homes, taking some books, taking some cookies, and went to, to meet people. And people were so nice. They were so happy that we came and talked to them. They'd watch the temple go up, but they didn't know, you know, can we come there? Are we allowed? Would, they, would we be welcome? And on the devotee's side, they were thinking, would these people be interested? Would they want to, you know? So each side is like in their own bubble, thinking that the other side, you know, probably wouldn't be interested or probably might say no or probably might say, why are you here? But when the devotees went out, people were so happy and interested also. <clears throat> But it took the devotees to do that, to go out, and, and then the, ex the result was beyond expectation. Is that okay? Okay. So, uh, thank you all very much, and I'm going to hand the seat over to His Holiness Niranjan Swami. Hare Krishna. You bring the second pillow with you? Uh -huh. Yes. You don't mind my leaving my stuff there. Huh? It's okay to have my stuff there. No, no, it's okay. No problem at all. <coughs> I'm not going to give another lecture, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to speak briefly. And, uh, uh, on a particular topic, when I was here last time, I think it was in end of December, um, I, I spoke from uh, Markane Bhagavad Dhamma, the poem that Srila Prabhupada had composed here in Boston Harbor, just before stepping onto the Commonwealth Pier. And we spoke about the significance of that, of those first steps that he had taken uh, almost 50 years ago. And at the end, I mean, we spoke about the event that the devotees are planning here for the 50th anniversary of Srila Prabhupada's arrival in America. And uh, yesterday, some of you are probably here. Uh, not, but I'm sure not everyone was here. But we had a. Uh, it was billed as a festival of inspiration. I guess that's how it was billed. But basically, uh, Jai Dwayda Maharaj and myself, we spoke about. Uh, uh, we, we spoke in such a way that we tried to create inspiration. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> to create inspiration for uh, participating as much as possible in this event and encouraging people uh, to do it in a way that would glorify Srila Prabhupada. To repeat all the details about which we spoke would bring me into another lecture, and all I have is a few minutes, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I did want to say a few words to introduce what we're going to show this evening it will be after the Arctic that uh, Vana Mali Prabhu has uh, prepared uh, a short presentation, a video presentation, which includes also a trailer of the film that my godbrother Yadubar Prabhu 
is, uh, has, is putting together currently, specifically for the 50th anniversary celebration uh, coming up, not only of Srila Prabhupada's arrival in America, but next year is the 50th anniversary of the incorporation of ISKCON. And actually most of the events that will take place around the world are actually supposed to be taking place next year, 2016. But there are two very significant events in 2015, uh, and those are Srila Prabhupada's departure from Calcutta on the Jaladuta, the day that he left on the Jaladuta from Calcutta, and the day that he stepped foot in America on September 17, 1965. Those are two events, particularly, which are going to be observed this year. And of course, that, because they are very significant events for 2015, it makes Boston a very significant place. It's, uh, it, it's, it can be celebrated in other places, Prabhupada's arrival in America, but if you think about it, what's the most significant place <laughs> to observe Srila Prabhupada's arrival in America? Uh, and that's Boston. So therefore the devotees have conceived and are still in the process of conceiving uh, a very uh, major celebration to be attended by senior devotees from all over the world and from local people, dignitaries, in a very, hopefully, a very nice place on the weekend of September 19th and 20th. And Yadubha Prabhu, as I was saying, has produced a film, or is producing a film, and this video that Vanamali is going to show tonight will include a three-minute trailer. I want you to please take note. Of course, there's a lot. There's, I think there's 14 minutes together. But please take note of that three-minute trailer that's contained within the, the presentation tonight. Uh, I'm sure the whole thing is inspiring, but if you look at this three-minute trailer, you'll see the kind of work that my godbrother Yadubha Prabhu is capable of doing. He's producing a full feature-length movie, and, uh, and he started work on it quite some time ago. And uh, as a matter of fact, in Mayapur this year, he gave, the, he showed, I gave Bhagavad, Shimad Bhagavad's on class one morning, and he showed this trailer before all the devotees who were assembled just before class. And the, when I was speaking before Bhagavad on class, I realized, uh, as I was speaking, that uh, his, and he ends the video by saying, this film is for S September 17th, 19, 2015, for Srila Prabhupada's arrival in America. That's the first showing that he wants to do of this film, is here in Boston. First showing will be here. Wow. And, <laughs> But I also realized that if it's going to be shown here September 15th, 2015, that he, he needs funds also to finish the film. <laughs> so please go to acharyathemovie.com. It's going to be shown in the video tonight. And see, that, uh, see the uh, trailer. And also we are raising funds here for our event also. But a significant part of this event will be the first showing of that feature left feature full full feature length movie i think that's what it's called yes <laughs> and uh, of course he's very determined uh, he's already raised uh, i think about 70% of the funds he requires and uh, in fact when he was in Vrindavan, uh he showed the showed the trailer, and someone came forward and, and gave him a check for a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> but that's only a small portion of what he requires. <laughs> Not a small portion, but it's a, a part of it. <clears throat> so we want to have this event here, and we want to also certainly have that that video. And uh, please, after the uh, after the RT. All of you, please stay to, to watch this presentation. And then uh, uh, think of ways that you could participate in helping to organize this event in a way that would be very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. We do not want it to simply just be a, 
a public relations event, as we spoke about yesterday. This is not what it is. It's an event that's aimed to, for Prabhupada's pleasure, and therefore what would please Prabhupada more than everybody taking part in selflessly rendering some service to glorify his, his work, his mission, and, uh, and to, as we spoke of yesterday, and to display the type of qualities that Prabhupada wanted to see in his followers, not only his immediate followers, but for generations to come. Uh, this will really be a true tribute to Srila Prabhupada. And it takes a very, it's a big collective effort to do something like this. It's no one person's work. But Srila Prabhupada, in establishing the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, he always, always put major focus and emphasis on cooperation. And that's what's going to be required to put on this event of this magnitude here for Boston. It's a one-time event, if you think about it. It's the 50th anniversary. Uh, not many of us are going to be around for the 100th. So, <laughs> please, in whatever way, whatever way you can participate, either by offering some funds or by offering, as Prabhupada would often say, prana artha diya vacha. You know, give, be prepared to give your prana, your life, your artha, your wealth, diya, your intelligence of vacha, simply give you words. But if you offer these things for the benefit and for the welfare of others, this is a great sacrifice. And what to speak of when it's performed for Prabhupada's pleasure. It can be a very wonderful event. And uh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all of you to, to take part in some way. So this is all I wanted to say briefly now. And... Uh, and also, I, maybe I should announce it now also, that uh, Vanamali Prabhu, is he here? Is Vanamali here? Yes. Vanamali Prabhu is, is actually, he and I think Dr. Nitin is working with you also as the main organizers for the event, right? There are other devotees also who are participating. But if anybody is interested in taking part, wanting to know when the meetings are going to take place, because now there's a lot of planning, it's not that far away in September. Please see Vanamali Prabhu, and uh, who's going to be organizing uh, this event. And also, I think it's an appropriate time to say that Vanamali, in a discussion that we had with him earlier today, we were speaking about the importance of, of having somebody who could give more time to assist Srila Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada, to assist Piyari Mohan Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> he is the temple president here, as all of you know, and we both all realized that, especially over the course of the last couple of months with eight feet of snow in Boston, it's not always so easy for Piyari Prabhu to, to get here to Boston. And uh, therefore, uh, Vanamali Prabhu came forward and offered to assist Piyari Mohan Prabhu with his responsibilities here in Boston. And I thought everyone here who are part of our congregation should know that he's taking up, uh, voluntarily taking this up and actively wants to assist PR in that way. <laughs> Not only in the organization of the 50th anniversary festival, but also here for the, for the temple activities. So, Please encourage him in whatever way by giving him an opportunity to assist Piari and to assist all of you as well. Thank you. Hare Krishna.